morning and welcome to Vedantu Daily Sessions. So far, we have been talking about chapter number 1 from class 10 CBSE syllabus, that is chemical reactions and equations. And we have covered all those important topics which are essential for exams. And now, we are starting with chapter number 2, that is acids, bases and salts. I hope chapter number 1 had been of some help to you. And in second chapter also, we are going to cover similarly the important topics or the essence of the chapter right but in case you have some topic or maybe some subtopic that you want to learn that you feel okay this is important and this needs to be helped out in don't hesitate letting me know in the comment section done so today we are getting started with the most basics and the terminology of the chapter as its basis and salts as usual guys make a running notes if you really want to get benefited out of these sessions right so let's get started and one second in case you missed all my previous classes and this is the first time that you are looking at my face, you are listening to Dr. Nasma Sheikh and I teach chemistry, right? So what comes into your, in your mind whenever you hear about acids, bases and salts? What is that one thing that flashes? Like for example, if I, if I talk about chocolate, dynamic flashes into my head. So same way, when I say acids, bases and salts, what flashes in, into your head? Is that the test tubes, the solutions and you know the acid burns and all of that? Is that what flashes? <laughs> okay, if that is the case, you have to change your perspective now. Because in class 10 CBSC, in the chapter acids, bases and salts, you are going to study in detail about each one of them, in detail about acids, in detail about bases and in very detail about salts. So, it's important that you have the right perspective towards those terms. These acids, bases and salts are not the things which are there in the test tubes, you know, the beakers or the conical flask and all of that. They are the ones which are present all around us, all around us in different forms. For example, you look at those citrus fruits and all of that, right? So, those citrus fruits contain acids. Not only that, there are so many food materials that we eat every that has acids bases all the cleaning cleansing agents that we are using in our real life do contain basic stuff and the salts i don't need to tell you one best example is common salt but otherwise also we have so many other salts being used in real life so this chapter is all about understanding the products that you have you that you use in your real life maybe for eating or maybe for different purposes right right so you're not going to study about only the solutions which are there in the test tubes, but you're going to learn the materials that are there around you. Let's get into the definition of what is an acid, what is a base, and what is a salt. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard. And let me move this camp and yes. How do we define acids, bases, and salts? There are so many definitions, but then I'm going to tell you one such definition, which is according to the first ever theory proposed about this concept okay but then as you go ahead in your studies maybe in class 11 12 more on there are so many theories that you come across about acids and bases there are around five definitions for acid five definitions per base and same for salt but right now you're going to learn only the very first definition that's been given ever done so according to that first definition given by a scientist by name Arrhenius Acid is a substance which on dissolving into water produces H plus ions. So if you take a substance and dissolve it into water, dissolve into water, if that substance is giving you H plus ions, this particular substance can be regarded as acid. So in short, acid on the solution into water leads to formation of hydro sorry leads to formation of h plus ions which are commonly called as protons all right now what is a base base is also a substance okay and this substance on the solving into water leads to formation of oh minus ions these ions are called as hydroxyl ions so if you have a substance dissolve it into water and see after dissolving into water, if it is giving you H plus ions, call it as an acid. If it is giving you OH minus ions, call it as a base. Now, I know what your question is. What if 
it's not giving either H plus or OH minus, but it is giving something else. Then you call it as neutral substance. What do you call it as? You call it as neutral substance. So it, if something doesn't either have protons or hydroxyl ions, it's, it's not acid, neither base. Then what is it? Then it is neutral. It doesn't have any acidic or basic character. Are we clear? So in the entire universe, the substances can be classified as acids, bases, and the neutral substances okay but we don't talk much about these neutral substances in the chapter we talk a lot about acids and bases all right so one last time defining acid something on the solution onto water which produces it, it it was messed up i'm redefining acid is a substance which produces h plus ions on the solution into water base is a substance which produces you also repeat along with me which produces oh minus ions after dissolving into water by the end of this video you should be familiar with all the definitions and all the terminology essential for the chapter all right so make sure you repeat the definitions along with me might not be loud but yeah maybe you know silently slowly all right find them examples of acids and bases fine Let's take a fresh page to discuss examples. In spite of just saying you the example, I'll give you the molecule. Look at HCl. HCl. It's called as hydrochloric acid. So the name itself is suggesting that this is an acid, but don't go over the name. You just go over the equation. Chemistry is believable. I mean, chemistry depends on equations or relies on equations. All right. So now HCl. After dissolving into water, what exactly happens here? The breakdown of the bond H plus and Cl minus. So, after dissolving into water H2O, HCl is giving you H plus and Cl minus. According to the definitions, if something gives you H plus or proton, what can you call it as? Can you call it as an acid? Absolutely, yes, this is an acid. But then there, there is one chodasa extension that you got to remember here. All right, chodasa extension. Listen to this carefully. The, you see this H plus, right? H plus. It's called as proton. So this H plus which is produced out of dissolution of acids, it doesn't remain quiet. It's very naughty and it's very reactive. So it doesn't remain quiet. Then what does it do? It immediately goes and reacts with water, combines with water, gets clubbed with water. As a result of this, what happens is it leads to formation of a new molecule called as H3O+. Do you see this? It was H2O plus H+, plus, right? I just clubbed both of them. Now H2 became H3 and positive charge is being put up all over the molecule H3O+. Plus. So I'm redefining the acid. Acids are the substances which dissolve in water to give you protons or H plus ions. But these H plus ions which are produced by acid will combine with the water that you have dissolved it in. It combines with the water, leads to formation of a new molecule called as H3O+. And the chemical name of this H3O plus is hydronium. What is this called as? This is called as hydronium ion. So, acids are the ones which give you either proton or hydronium. If proton is produced, hydronium is automatically produced, right? So, I obviously can define acid as something which gives you proton and stop there. Or maybe I may define acid as something which gives you proton and in turn hydronium ion. Both makes the same sense. Until and unless you don't have proton furnished, you don't have hydronium ion furnished. I hope you are all able to follow. And this hydronium ion wala concept is important. Because if you refer the books like S. Chand or Pradeep's or Together with Science, they define acids like something which gives you hydronium ion. They don't stop with proton. So it's important you understand what's hydronium, right? So hydronium ion is H3O plus and this is formed when H2O mixes up with proton that is H plus. Are we clear? Good to go ahead. So actually let's come back and discuss more examples of acids. HCl is one example. Note it down. Second example H2SO4. Now, say I'm dissolving H2SO4 into water. What happens? This leads to formation of what in what? You see, it has H+, plus, but then observe how many H plus ions can it furnish? How many hydrogens does it have in one mole of H2SO4? I see H2, that means 2H+. Did you notice this? HCl gave how many? 
if you have HCl, put it into water, it can give you only 1H+. But if you have H2SO4, put it in water, it will give you 2H+. Did you notice the number of H plus ions or the number of moles of H plus ions depends on which acid you are talking about. And more is the H plus ion concentration, more is the acidic strength. So H2SO4 is stronger acid. In fact, H2SO4 is regarded as the king of of acids this is the king of acids all right so now along with 2h plus this also gives you so4 minus 2 since you have 2h plus being produced which are nothing but the protons you can regard h2so4 as an acid so these are some examples of acids acid is something which gives you proton or hydronium after dissolving into water underline this word only after dissolving into water if you are not dissolving into water you can't detect if this is acid or not no you will not know all right dissolving into water is a very crucial term based on this dissolving into water wala concept you may also have a practical based question you know your paper pattern right the class 10 cbsc science ka paper pattern you know it already right how kind of questions come you know how to prepare for that particular test from the beginning in case you don't know in case you want me to make a separate video on that please let me know in the comment section all right so let's go ahead with the examples of bases hcl and h2so4 are acids now what are the examples of bases before that let's recall the definition of a base base is something which furnishes oh minus ions after dissolving into water correct right let's take naoh now say you are dissolving naoh into water this particular bond breaks down leads to formation of na plus and oh minus now if you are confused ma'am then where is water going on i'm not writing water that's it because water is anyways common correct Water anyways is H2O, it will remain. But then now, according to the definitions, we are trying to check if the particular molecule is having H plus or OH minus or if the particular is molecule is not having anything, right? So, I'm not considering water because we don't need to do it right now because we are just in the definitions part, all right? So, now NaOH gives you Na plus and OH minus. As you see, OH minus hydroxyl ion. Get technical. Learn the scientific names. They are important. So, you are having a hydroxyl ion produced, which in turn means that NaOH is a base. Okay. Now, let's take one more example. This time, you are going to tell me if it is an acid or base. Okay. So, now CH3. Okay ch3 oh okay, let's not get organic because uh maybe that's a longer molecule i'll talk about it later i'll give you a simple one for now mgoh twice do you see this can you tell me if you dissolve mgoh twice into water what could be the ions produced and according to those ions is this an acid or base so you just directly tell me acid or base if you are trying to say it's a base you are right because the dissolution will give you mg plus 2 and 2 oh minus that's it as simple as that correct you have oh minus ions produced hydroxyl ions so you can call it as a base but then there are 2 oh minus ions produced then uh, is there a difference or is there a speciality it is still a base maybe you may regard it as a stronger base or you know maybe concentrated one later irrespective of the number of OH minus ions or H plus ions produced, first you have to determine the acid or base. Let it be 1H plus, 2H plus, 3H plus, 100H plus, 1000H plus. You don't need to care. As long as you see H plus being produced, it's an acid. Yeah, the strength of acid depends on how many H plus ions are produced, but that's secondary. We will talk about it in the next video. Okay. Similarly, we don't need to care how many OH minus ions are produced. The point that we need to care is, are OH minus ions being produced or not? If yes, it's a base. If no, it's not a base. It's something else. All right. So NaOH, MgOH twice are two examples of bases that we spoke about. Right. So now we are clear about acid. We are clear about base. The definitions and the examples. I hope you guys are able to follow. And now the third one. Listen to this carefully. huh? This is the third component of the name of the chapter. Salts. If you have an acid and base 
reacting with each other can acids and bases react with each other yes they are like anti to each other they are like enemies they kill each other they react with each other to kill each other okay so acids and bases yes they react with each other and this particular reaction is called as neutralization neutralization is a double displacement reaction according to chapter one acid and base neutralize each other and they lead to formation of salt plus water so now what is salt how do we define salt salt is the product of neutralization between any acid and any base is that all the definition yes that's all is the definition so the salts doesn't contain h plus it doesn't even contain oh minus like purely OH minus purely H plus does not exist then what does it contain it contains any cations and any anions for example uh, if I take HCl and NaOH okay acid and base react them with each other they lead to formation of NaCl plus H2O so now look at this NaCl NaCl is a common salt it's it's the common salt that we use now observe the ions it has Na plus it has Cl minus does it have H plus no does it have OH minus? No. Then what else does it have? It has anything else but H plus and OH minus. It's a salt, right? So what is salt? The product of neutralization. How is it formed? When acid and base undergo neutralization, a salt is formed. Now, what is the other product formed in neutralization? Other than salt, what do you have? You have water. Neutralization means something which gives you salt and water, right? So one more example for neutralization before we could proceed forward so this time um, let's take H2SO4 plus MgOH twice you are going to try this out try to write the products I hope you know how to write the products if I give you reactants like this can you write the products can you predict the products of any particular reaction if S yes, that's well and good if no let me know so that I can help you out right so now the products of this reaction are 2H2O plus MgSO4 so now you observe anyways water is water just leave it now MgSO4 is the salt observe the ions it has Mg plus 2 SO4 minus 2 it doesn't have H plus and it doesn't even have OH minus but it has something else right these are called as salts the products of neutralization which doesn't contain either H plus or OH minus alone are called as salts but then remember it's not necessary that salt is neutral substance. A salt could be acidic, basic or maybe neutral. We'll talk about it maybe in video number 4 or 5 related to this chapter. Okay. So let us first summarize whatever we have done today. We just have understood the vocabulary which is essential to learn this chapter. Definition of acid and examples. Definition of base and examples. Definition of salt and examples. Along with two neutralization reactions. Followed by what is hydronium ion. These are the four points covered in today's video. I'm telling you again, this is super duper important and you got to know these definitions very clearly if you want to come to my second video. So in the next video, we'll talk about classification of acids. Also, we'll talk about different types of bases, different types of salts. Okay, so I hope these videos are helping you, but I'm repeating something which I said at the beginning of the video. In case you have any topic from this chapter that you want to learn, that you feel, okay, ma uh, maybe the students feel it most difficult. So if I'm teaching, if ma'am is teaching this topic, it will be helpful to me and to many students. If you have any such topics in your idea, don't hesitate letting me know. The entire motto of these videos to help you guys out. So what's the point if you are not sharing your tough, uh, tough points or pain points, right? So I'll wait for your comments. If you're thinking, how do you let me know? Let me know through comment section. I'll wait for your comments before making the next video. Done? Until then, bye-bye everybody. Thank you.